Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Okay, so I know, I know, Vince, you know, we've got you here for maybe like eight minutes, so I do want to get to some of the, uh, some of the stuff from the last time and we put up stuff i don't oh, know if you want to talk about my book rat snake <laughs> sure mean? absolutely i can show it <laughs> you know i can absolutely show the book lola has thrown up links to both rat snakes as well as mike daddy's books operation wide receiver and guns across the border there's um links and things like that that lola has thrown up here um you know when you were on we talked about a, couple, a bunch of different things right so one of those videos was uh, who does the ATF go after, which actually wound up being, I'm going to throw it up on the screen. This happened like maybe a month ago, I think you were on. And um, that video, let's see, I'm going to pull it up right here and we'll look, take a look at the stats. So that video has 144,000 views. <laughs> you know, um, and, and I asked you the question, I think we asked the question, who does the ATF go after? You answered that question. Lots of people got mad. <laughs> Lots of things happen there. Um, you know, I think to paraphrase what you said, you said the ATF goes after the bad guys. Um, in in light of the things that the ATF has been doing since then, you know, um, do you still feel that way that they're just going after the bad guys? I'm I'm extremely worried about the future for the ATF. Um, we're sort of in a a leaderless, we're like in a rudderless ship. Uh, we have an acting director who has her own agenda. The deputy director, the number two guy, was found to have perjured himself during some of the J. Dobbins stuff. I mean, that was the OIG, not me. Um, they're bureaucrats. And I'm afraid they're going to cave to whatever winds blow and if the new administration comes in and says, you need to start, you know, we're going to get a magazine uh, tax or we're going to um, outlaw these uh, uh, AR, where we need you to start going. That's not the mission of ATF. And they should say, look, you know what? Pass a law. Pass a law. Amend the Gun Control Act to include anyone who's bought a uh, AR-15 pistol, well, then the law is the law. But you know as well as I do, it'd take forever and they're never going to pass that law. But a bunch of executive orders or a bunch of pressure from the administration to uh, create criminals out of previously law-abiding citizens, that's not going to bode well for the agency. Mm -hmm. And it's going to meet with resistance and it's going to be a horrible scenario. If I were the director, I'd say, look, we got the laws on the books, convicted felons, dope dealers, whatever, et cetera, et cetera, are not allowed to possess firearms. You got to register machine guns. That's what we're enforcing. Mm -hmm. um, beyond that, hand me a, a United States code an amendment to the Gun Control Act, and we will enforce that too. Until then, we're not your whipping dog. We're not your puppies. We're not going to go out and pursue an agenda. I'm just afraid that we don't have the leadership in ATF right now that would stand that ground and the autonomy, the apolitical view. So here's... here's um. Uh, Flying Rich gave us a couple of bucks. He says politics is just showbiz for the ugly. Um, <laughs> that's his statement. Uh, one of the things I would think is any more laws, like you said, pass a law, right? What I would say is the laws we already have are infringements on the Second Amendment. Any more laws are going to be further infringements on the Second Amendment. And Biden, if you look at his plan that he has to go after the Second Amendment... Me personally, I'm not planning on complying with any of that. So they can pass be, all the laws it they be want. Unconstitutional, and I don't think people need worry because I think they'll be tied up in the courts until this administration is come and gone. Mm -hmm. um, they're not compliance. Pass the laws mm -hmm. and get the support 
um, to disarm honest, law-abiding citizens. Mm -hmm. They might make our lives miserable a little bit and create a bunch of drama, but at the end of the day, without a law, I don't. I don't believe the current laws are unconstitutional. We'll disagree. Agree to disagree on that. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the Second Amendment, I don't think the Second Amendment was meant for convicted felons or assholes or criminals to be able to possess guns. Um, I don't think it was meant for drug dealers to be able to arm themselves or bank robbers or anybody else to arm themselves. That that wasn't the intention of the Second Amendment. Never was. Um, I think there's a lot of laws now that are not just, first of all, criminals don't care what the laws are. Bad correct. guys, drug dealers, thugs, you know, those assholes out there you're talking about, they don't care about the laws. It's the, it's the law abiding citizen. Well, but the law abiding citizens are suffering for the laws that exist out there. And then there's states that are just straight up not allowing American citizens to have access to their Second Amendment rights. So to me, right. that's why I feel that way. But that's not a that's not an issue of federal jurisdiction or ATF jurisdiction. We enforce the federal gun laws, which, if you read them, they're pretty fair. They're pretty reasonable for the most part. Not to say there aren't things that can be tweaked, but generally speaking, um, they're aimed at public safety. Okay. But the bad guys don't follow those laws, and that's why we have prison sentences and what have you. Okay, so, for example, last time you were on the show, you said that you have um, an AR pistol, right? You have one of no, those. No, I don't remember saying that. <laughs> oh, you said that. <laughs> well, video... I did, but, but my boat sank. <laughs> right, okay, yes. And as I said, as an ATF agent, as a former ATF agent, however you want to look at it, you know, you're not allowed that excuse. But if we, if it comes to that, that they decide to go after uh, braces even, for example, uh, is this something that you plan on complying with and going along with? I, I'd comply with the law. I don't know that I'd comply with an executive order or some ruling mm -hmm. by ATF while it's dialed up in the courts and being contested at every level, which it will be. Mm -hmm. Do you have... You know, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. if it went through the courts and the Supreme Court or whoever, however that process went through, and they ruled them to be illegal, I would probably comply with that, if mm -hmm. it was that specific. If they said all guns have to be registered, pay taxes, blah, 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 and magazines, yeah, you know what, good luck, you better have a search warrant. Okay. All right, Mike, did you want to reply to that? Oh, I, I think I'm, I'm pretty close on that. Like I said, mm -hmm. um, probably before we started uh, the show, mm -hmm. uh, ATF initially approved these. If you remember back in 2013, these were called the SIG braces. The first, uh, the first guns that these pistols that look like AR-15s have these braces were made by SIG. And uh, I saw those at the NRA show, and I saw holy moly that's legal mm -hmm. good deal and then somewhere a couple years later atf came out and said you know what uh these are legal until you put them against your shoulder to shoot now that's not legal and then maybe a year year and a half later they came out and said you know what yeah you can put those against your shoulder and shoot them that's where we're at right now despite what happened uh in the last two or three months where one eight uh, office uh, issued a letter that said the uh, is it the uh, honey badger? Yeah. Uh, so is, so one is, of, was an illegal gun. Yeah. So one of the things, if I could just like speak on this, and Vince, I don't know if you got a couple of minutes to bear with us. We are. Yeah, I got a minute or two, man. I got bailed. Up. Okay. All right. So one of the things that happened, I think, initially when the ATF approved. The uh, stabilizing brace, it was that specific design, that old, ugly one that people, folks didn't like. And I think that after that, um, you know, an industry was created around that. You know, we, I think we can very fairly say that industry was created by SB Tactical. What happened is that after that, 
you know, there were there was requirements that every new version of that they put out there be further approved of by the ATF. And I believe that SP Tactical said they try to get clarification on exactly what were the parameters for that, right? Because because now you would have to send in a gun with a with a with a new brace on it, and the ATF has to look at it. If they say no, this is no good, you've got to start all over again, and that gets expensive. They didn't do that. Um, SB Tactical was being told by the ATF these new braces, if you put them on AR pistols, they become SBRs. They ignored that. Other folks were out there making things and did get approval letters for the new things. But there were cases where the, these new things that were being put out there that were licensed from SB Tactical were um, were seen as SBRs. They were showing up in, and people were getting arrested and charged with crimes. And the ATF was coming in and saying, this thing is not the same as that original brace. And that's really how we got to this situation that we're in now, because the ATF is saying, well, these new things are really stocks. They, they kind of, they're making them look like a like, you know, like something that goes over your arm and can stabilize it, but it's not really that. And then even as you said, a lot of people just started doing it because, hey, I don't have to get do the $200 tax stamp. This is a this is an end run. But so there's this is what this is how this situation is really becoming an issue right now. And even the ATF is saying those original ugly, no one likes them <laughs> braces that can that are more flexible and can go over your arm. Those are fine. <laughs> But a lot of these new ones are not, and I think I believe that's what happened with Q because Q licensed their, the newer ones from SB Tactical, not knowing that SB Tactical did not get uh, approval letters from the ATF, and this somebody went on for years. Needs, somebody just needs to call the director and say you're not a, an elected uh, person to the legislature. Stop trying to make laws make fair rulings when you make a ruling stick with it mm -hmm. it's a rocket science we create our own problems mm -hmm. yeah I... but we create them because depending on who's in office none of this sbr stuff with these arm braces were mentioned they've been out for years mm -hmm. i haven't heard nothing about it my friends have been telling me oh you gotta buy one of these you gotta buy one of these you gotta buy one of these and then when it became apparent that the new administration was going to, like, hamper that, I went out and bought one. Yeah. So, yeah, I, with that, I agree. I mean, you know, and apparently the, the uh, ATF was just sitting on it, not doing anything about it publicly and maybe but just now privately. A, yeah. a political advantage to making noise. Yeah. Well, that's not what a law enforcement agency is supposed to do. No, just clarify this. Even if you've made it public now, clarify it and let let corporate let companies out there that want to be in this business know what the parameters are so that they can function. Exactly. And then if Congress wants to step in and outlaw them and amend, which would be a total nightmare, it would never happen. They could never amend the Gun Control Act to do that. Um, there you have it. Yeah, yeah. Listen, yeah. Um, I, I don't want to, because I know you have the surgery, man, and, and yeah, there's, a lot, go, there's man. a lot of folks saying good luck to you with the surgery. Hope everything goes well. It. Please let us know. I would love to have you back on. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to say a prayer for you, man, that you Appreciate it, get through that, and you come back and you kick just as many ass <laughs> as you've been doing. Hey, Mike, talk to you soon, buddy. All right, thanks good so luck. much. Good luck, Semper Thank you. Semper Fi, brother. All right, Vince. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.